Hey guys, it's Atari and I'm going to show you how you can qualify for a Rabi or D-Bank airdrop. Last week it was hinted by Rabi where they mentioned that you want to get ready for a snapshot. Many people think that because the snapshot hasn't been taken, you can still qualify. And so here's some of the steps that I would take that I am actually actively taking so that I can qualify for the airdrop. Now, I want to put a disclaimer that nobody knows what the criteria are for this, whether it's for Rabi or D-Bank, and I'll explain the difference between the two. So I mentioned that there's two different platforms. The Rabi is a wallet and that wallet is made by D-Bank, the company. D-Bank is a DeFi data analytics and social platform and they're both fairly interconnected. To qualify for this airdrop, you're gonna wanna take your MetaMask or your Rainbow or whatever wallet and you're gonna wanna import the seed or private key into Rabi. Now if that sounds like a lot, the one thing I will say is that since using Rabi over MetaMask, I can't go back to MetaMask because one of the main benefits is that Rabi is already integrated with all these chains so that you don't have to switch network every time you go from Arbitrum to Avalanche to Linnea to Scroll. And because I'm airdrop farming, I have to do that quite a lot. With Rabi, it's all baked into one wallet and so you don't need to manually switch every time. You can just transact on any chain that you want and it's good to go. So it is actually becoming a replacement for MetaMask. So that's about Rabi, but let's talk about DBank. They've raised 20 5 million from some of the biggest crypto venture firms like Sequoia, Crypto.com, and Coinbase and others. And so usually when you see all this investment and you see some hints of airdrops, something's probably coming. We just don't know when. Here's what I'm doing and what I'll, what I would do if I were you if I want to qualify for the airdrop. And for this, you're going to need about $200. I would say $96 is money that you're not going to get back because you're going to use it to mint something. The rest of the money is more to get transaction volume through swapping on Rabi. You can do that with less than $100 as well. We're going to get started with DBank. Okay, we're gonna get started with DBank. So go to dbank.com and you can log in via your Web3 wallet. You can have MetaMasks at this point, but I would already have recommended getting Rabi. So if you wanna get Rabi before you get started and import your MetaMask, then I would go to rabi.io, download for Chrome, and then just go through the steps. I'm gonna go ahead and connect via DBank and Rabi, verify that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to add your Twitter, over here and your email. I'll zoom in so you can see that. You're gonna go ahead and link both of those here. Email, add your Twitter and confirm both of them. And then once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to register a DBank L2. Now this is where the whole token airdrop comes from because DBank has an L2 that's only a testnet right now. It hasn't officially launched it. An L2 is like an Arbitrum, like a Zora. Like, and so they're gonna be launching their own. That's why there's a high chance there's going to be an airdrop for people that have registered for their L2. So you're gonna click that and you're gonna register. It says select the chain for registration. You can register for layer two on any of the following chains, but the gas fees will depend on which chain you choose. Now, you don't want to do it on Ethereum. You'd rather have it on Optimism or Arbitrum or even BNB because the fees there are going to be the cheapest. You're going to click next. It's going to generate a DBank key. You're going to send that request. It's going to pop up here. You're going to sign and create. And you're going to pay a little bit of gas. So it's seven cents here that you're going to pay. And it's going to generate this key. I'm not going to do it right now because I've already done it with my other account. But once that's done, you will officially have uh, a DBank layer two that's done through Optimism. Once you do that, you'll be able to deposit money to the L2. So you can see here, I can deposit to L2 from any of these chains, Ethereum, BNB, Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon. And uh, say if I select Optimism, I can do USDC or USDT. And deposit that into the layer two. Now, the reason you're gonna to wanna to deposit to the layer two is because you'll see here, uh, I have my ID minted, Atare. If I go back to the other account, you'll see that I need to mint my ID and it's gonna cost me $96. So here's where you can click and mint your Web3 ID. You type in what you want and you'll pay $96 in uh, from the layer two. So you're gonna have to deposit from layer one to layer two either on Optimism or Ethereum or whatever into the DBank layer two in USDC or USDT, and then you can mint this. This is probably a surefire bet to get the airdrop. If you have this minted, it costs $96. I believe there's a limited amount only. I think last I read, there's only gonna be about 100K, and I don't know how many have been minted. So that's one thing you're gonna to wanna to do. 
Then if you go over here, you see there's a there's a stream functionality and this is where you can start posting. If you don't mint your ID, you're not gonna be able to do any of this stuff, which is why it's important because it unlocks a lot of the functionality and this functionality is likely what they're gonna be using when they qual qualify you for the airdrop. So once you log in and you've done the steps, you've minted your ID, you've added your email, you're gonna get a lot more functionality. Uh, you can go to stream, you can start posting. Now you can do this uh, three times every 24 hours when you have minted an ID. And the, the main thing is you wanna be using the platform. Once you get your ID, you can set up a PFP that's an NFT. So you can go ahead and it'll just recognize what's in your wallet and select one of these and set it up because that's also shown that it gets you debank points, which lets you move up in the ranks over here. That might help you qualify for the airdrop. Now, some of the other things that you can be doing here is if you go to more, you'll see vote. So with an ID, you can start to vote on some of these proposals here. See, so I've, I've, I can upvote them. You can actually submit a new proposal as well on this. And the proposals, what from what I've seen, is fairly simple. People are like, this is a scam token. Uh, this is a scam token. You don't have to go crazy. You can post fairly basic things. Click create a new proposal. You can ask it to support a new token, delist the token, which is what you saw. There's some NFT stuff, like there's a new NFT collection that, that you want to support or delist the collection or call something out as a scam. And then there's change. I'd say the NFT and the token are probably the easiest ones that you can just submit a proposal. And then that'll show you that you've actually submitted a proposal. That's probably a good thing that you want to do. The other thing that you can be doing is using the high area. This is where you can start conversations with people that are on D-Bank. So if I want to say hi, it's 10 cents to say hi to this person. So I'll click say hi. Yeah, so the first message is free. You can message people and then maybe afterwards it's going to cost you something. Sending some messages on here, probably a good bet to know that you're actually using the platform. And then the last thing I want to show you here before we go to Rabi is I want to go to badges so here we go we have web3 badges here now this is based off of your on-chain activity i'll scroll down you can see there's some badges 100 days on chain 1000 days on chain go ahead and see which ones you qualify for to know which ones you do qualify for you can just click into them and if this is if this is not grayed out then you can mint. i've already minted these and these don't cost anything it's just one click and it mints it for you so this is the perfect time to segue into rabbi valued user and the rabbi wallet because it's issued by that so how you get the badges actually when you go into rabbi you're going to want to start using it and initiate swaps so the button over here is this you're going to click swap and i want to be on arbitrum let's say i want to take 0 0.001 which is two dollars and i want to switch it from eth to usdc you get quotes and it'll give you all the different options that you have. The first time that you use this, you're gonna to need to enable trading. And so see down here where it says click edit, it's gonna pull this up. So normally it's gonna have all of these off. And so you won't, you'll be able to see the quotes, but you won't be able to trade. Just go in and turn them all on. And then once you have that, you don't have to worry about that again. I'm gonna say Kyber swap is the best. So I'm gonna click that, I'm gonna swap. It's gonna ask me to confirm I'm paying this much, I'm receiving this much, and I'm going through Kyber, and sign and create, confirm. You've just done a swap on Arbitrum, and then here's where you claim the Rabi badge. So you go ahead and click more and claim Rabi badge. I've already done it, but essentially you open it up on DBank, it's gonna give you a code and you paste that code in here. You can only claim this after you've done one swap. So that's why you need to do the swap first. And lastly, you wanna request DBank testnet gas token you can do this daily i've already done it today but chances are this dbank testnet users are probably going to get some of the airdrop as well we've seen that in other airdrops as well where when you're on the testnet you get a specific allocation and so recommend doing this to up your chances of potentially getting the airdrop you can also head over to approvals and it opens up in this page. And so instead of using revoke.cash, you can just look at all the approvals that you have here by contracts and by asset. So these are all the coins that I've given approval for on different sites. And these are all the different uh, smart contracts. Let's say I wanna remove this one. Sorry, I click that, confirm, and then revoke. It's gonna ask me to pay. And your, the contract has been revoked. So it's really useful to just have this available within your wallet. It doesn't hurt to use it at least once or twice. 
The last thing I want to say is when it comes to qualifying for the airdrop, especially through Rabi, you want to be swapping and you want to be requesting those tokens from testnet with swapping you want to look at how much volume are you pushing through so for example the jupiter airdrop the solana dex they had a minimum amount that if you transacted one thousand dollars in volume on jupiter you qualified for the first airdrop could be something similar here with rabi so i don't know what the, the the minimum amount is but it just helps to do it frequently with decent amount of volume the second thing you want to do is you want to look at how often you're doing it. Some airdrops have looked at like how many unique weeks or unique months have you been using the platform. So if you used it five times in October and two times in November, then they would say you've done it for two unique months. But they've also done weekly as well. So once a week is probably a really good time to just go in and swap from Ethereum to USDC and back to Ethereum if you want to keep it like that. And that's going to maximize your chances of getting a part of this airdrop.